So as the United Kingdom leaves the 28, now 27 nation European Union, the big question began ramping up about 2 a.m. Who's next? Which is the next country that's going to start agitating to exit? Well, already people are familiar with that coined Brexit phrase, but these have begun to pop up. Try this one. Italy for Italy. There's Frexit for France. Check out for the Czech Republic. And then this is, a, this is a bit of a stretch. Austria, like Austria, like out. How fearful is the European Union, though, that, the, that look, it will, it will cause a domino effect? What happens next? Let us bring in right now in the chair the current European Union ambassador to the United States, David O'Sullivan. Uh, sir, we don't mean to be alarmist. I'm just reporting the news. That's what we do here because we feel it, it's our duty to let our viewers know exactly what people are saying. And they're saying somebody's next. What are you saying to that? Well, I think that's a rather uh, dramatic overreach uh, from the events which have happened in the UK. The British people have had this referendum. They've been looking for it for some time. Uh, there was a tough debate. There is now a clear outcome. With regret, we note that the United Kingdom has decided to leave. I think the situation in the UK has always been somewhat different, as the, the German lady you interviewed just a few moments ago has said. Uh, I think it would be dangerous to make that stretch into other states, other countries of the European Union. I believe that the European Union has brought enormous benefits for our citizens, uh, peace, reconciliation, prosperity indeed. If you look, no country is worse off than, it, than when it joined the European Union. There are challenges, there are difficulties. People are critical of the European Union. We understand that. Uh, and we will continue to address those concerns. But I believe that the 27, with regret, will reach an accommodation with the UK on its departure. And then we will move on to continue to try to make the European Union function well in the best interests of our citizens. Well, walk us through what happens next, sir, because, you know, there's the so-called Article 50, which is pretty much as they call them the divorce papers. Who gets what? Indeed. Who gets the car? Who gets the house? You know, I'm simplifying it, but what really happens next and on what timeline? Because we keep hearing two years, and yet Martin Schulz, the president of the European Union, I was just reading a headline just a few seconds ago where he said, we're done. We want you out. Get out, Britain. We're finished with you. Well, the position is that under the treaty, and it's important to, to remember that the European Union is a democracy, founded on democracy, and there's a, an article in the European treaties which allows member states to leave if that is their democratic decision. This foresees a period of up to two years, as you say, in order to uh, unravel the legal relationship between that member state and the, and the European Union. The, heads of the institutions today asked respectfully the British government to proceed with this as soon as possible. Right. As you've been reporting, uh, the great enemy here for all of us at this point is uncertainty, uncertainty about the legal framework in which companies will operate in the coming years. So it's in the best interest of everyone that we try to settle this matter as quickly as possible. Two years is what is foreseen. Perhaps it can be done more quickly. And as you say, this settles the issue of unraveling the legal relationship. A second issue will be what is the new relationship between a United Kingdom outside of the European Union and that European Union, including access to the single market, issues about free movement of services and financial services and free movement of people. This will be, have to be looked at in, in parallel or in a second phase. Okay, I, again, I don't mean to be alarmist, and I, I hear the measurement in your voice, and we want to be measured for our viewers, too. However, when you have 61% of the French polled populace saying they don't like the relationship either, and there are other countries, and we know the discontent, certainly on behalf of some people in Germany, they just don't like being dragged down by weaker nations in the European Union. I, I, I don't mean to be rude. I don't want to... to be, be pushy here, but how can you say that, that there are no other countries that would be interested in at least having a referendum? Well, I, I didn't say there are no other countries that would be interested in having a referendum. It's for each country to decide how it wants to resolve these issues. Germany, for example, does not actually favor the use of, of referenda. Mm -hmm. uh, they stick to representative democracy. Uh, and you need to remember that all of the governments that are in place at the present time are supportive of the membership of their country of the European Union. And by the way, there are differing polls. I, I, I know the ones you're talking about, but there are other polls which show that there are still strong majorities in all of the, the remaining 27 member states who, who 
who, who want to remain in the European Union. That does not mean that they're, they're not critical of the European Union. Let me be clear here. I'm not saying that everyone likes everything about the European Union, but right. I believe that many people recognize that it has been an unparalleled structure for producing peace, reconciliation, okay. prosperity, and progress in Europe. And I think people will be very, very slow to jettison that uh, in favor of a much more uncertain future. That is the choice that the British have made. We respect it. I am very skeptical that that choice will be quickly made elsewhere amongst the 27. Okay. I, I appreciate you coming on. It sounds like a, it, it's kind of one of our families, like my family. You know, we love everybody, but we're still allowed to be critical of each other. Thank you exactly. so much, sir. David O'Sullivan is you. the European Union ambassador to the U.S. We appreciate you jumping in the chair for us.